In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a PlayStation 4 controller up to your Flight Sim 2020. So first thing we have to do is we have to connect your PlayStation controller to your Windows computer. Come down to your search menu and type in Bluetooth. You're going to see add Bluetooth or other devices. Click on that. It's going to bring you to this and then click on Bluetooth. So this is when you now click the PlayStation button and share button for a couple seconds. It's going to start blinking and then you're going to be able to add it to your Windows computer. Once that is done, it's going to go through the setup process without you. And you will now have your PlayStation remote connected to your PC. This isn't the end though. We have to do another step to make this work. So you're now going to have to go to ds4windows.com. So this is ds4-windows.com. I'll leave the link in the description. But if you go to this website, you should be able to download this for free. So this should work with all three, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. In this case, I'm using a PlayStation 4, so it's the only one I've actually tested. Once you've downloaded that and installed it, you come over here and you will. this will be the program that opens up. You have a couple options here, but you don't really have to do a whole lot in here. You could probably leave it as default, but I had to create a new one. I had this program already installed and there was already some settings set up and it caused some issues when I went into Flight Sim. So what you could do is you go in here to new, and you're just going to name it. So you can call this one Flight Sim 2020 and just hit save, save profile. And now you have a Flight Sim 2021. You can click on this one and now that's going to be the active profile. So there you go. So now I have the active profile up. So you're going to leave this up. You're not going to close it. Just move it off. Maybe shrink it down or move it to another screen if you have another screen. It just has to be open and it's going to allow your PlayStation remote to now be seen as an Xbox remote. I have the Microsoft Store version of Flight Sim 2020, but I've also seen it work on the Steam version as well. So just keep that in mind. It's going to work on either version. So now when you come into your settings, there's not a lot you want to change, but you do want to change the sensitivity. So under sensitivity, yours is going to show up and it might, mine showed up as, I think it was 100%. It was, uh, yeah, I believe it was 100%. So as soon as you adjusted anything, it was 100%. It was either all or nothing. So you have to come in here and just tweak this. I found that around 70% is a pretty nice range. Even zero is fine, but 70% seemed to work pretty well. And you can do that. You do that with the sensitivity minus and the sensitivity plus. And then I moved my dead zone all, all the way down to zero. But I'm probably going to play around with that a little bit. Might need a little bit of a dead zone, depending if you're seeing things move on their own. Once you've done that, you can exit out, hit apply and save. And now you have a functioning flight sim. Right now I'm using the left joystick to control my ailerons and elevators. And I can now control my, my view with the right joystick. I also have different options on here. Like I can use my R1, L1 to control my flaps. You can see they're going up and down on the right there. And my throttle is now controlled with the X and the O button. So now I can push O to release my throttle and I can push X to, to add some throttle in. So if this video helped you out, make sure you hit that thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.